Hello and welcome to the part 3 of our buffer overflow module. In the last part we saw how to discover a vulnerability using fuzzing. So we fuzzed the float FTP server using random strings and we identified that if we send the server a string long enough it will cause a crash in the server. In this part we'll create a proof of concept code using the string we identified in the last part that crashed the application and we'll further enhance that proof of concept to increase our buffer size. These are the few software that I am assuming that you have a knowledge, basic knowledge of and if you want to learn more about these things or if you need to learn from scratch about these things, you can check out the resources mentioned at the end of this video. So we are on the POC creation uh, part of this module and uh, in the coming days we will cover the next three parts as well. You can find the links to the previous two parts in the description below. So our target software here is Microsoft Windows XPSP3 and on Microsoft Windows XPSP3 we are running a float FTP server 1.0 which is known for a buffer overflow vulnerability. This vulnerability was discovered in 2012 and it was rated as 10 on 10 by the CVE, uh, by the Mitre CVE initiative. You can read more about the CVE on the link mentioned below. So a proof of concept is nothing but a script or a program to replicate the crash that we identified through the fuzzing. It can be written in any language, either C, C++, Java or any of your preferred language. I will be using Python for this series. And uh, we'll further enhance this POC as we'll move along this module to convert it into an exploit. So let's move to our lab. So as you can see here that this is a very simple Python script written to connect to our FTP target and send the evil string that is 512As that will cause the FTP server to crash. And on Windows XP, uh, let's run the FTP server. So I'm using Immunity Debugger to uh, help me in creating the exploit for the server. Great. So now our server is running as you can see here in the bottom. Let's move back to our Kali machine and uh, let's send this evil string of 512As to our target server. So we'll uh, great. So now let's see if the float FTP server has crashed. And uh, it has, so you can see here that status of the application has changed to paused and an access violation has occurred. So this is the same error that we saw last time. And if you see the registers, you will see that EIP has been overwritten with 41, 41, 41, 41, which is nothing but hex for capital A. And the ESP register uh, is also written with A's. And if I follow this in dumb, we'll see that it has been written by these many A's. So now let's see if we can increase the number of A's that get written in the ESP register. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to increase the number of A's that I am sending this application. Let's say I'll increase it to 700. Save the script and uh, I'll have to restart the F float FTP server and, uh, yes so now the float FTP server is running let's move back to the Kali machine and uh, send it 700 A's great now let's see if the application has crashed again uh, it has and uh, now let's monitor the ESP register so now you can see that the number of A's that get overwritten to ESP have increased. So I am again going to increase it and see if I can send it 1000 A's so that it would give us a more buffer to place our shell code. 
Let's save it. Uh, I'll have to restart the immunity debugger. Oh, sorry. I'll have to restart the float FTP server in immunity debugger. And play. And now let's execute a script again. Python PY. And again, the application has crashed. EIP has been overwritten and uh, let's follow ESP and dump and uh, we'll see that the number of A's have again increased and uh, they are probably uh, so we are now have a sufficient buffer size to place our shell code here so this was it for this part in the next part we'll see how to enhance this POC and take control of registers such as EIP and ESP so essentially what we'll do is in our string we'll identify what characters uh, so we'll identify at what location are the characters which with which the EIP gets overwritten and uh, we'll test if we get the right location and then so we'll try to take the control of EIP and redirect the execution to the ESP where we'll, uh, where we'll place our shell code. So these are the learning resources you can use to learn more about the software or techniques that we are using in this module. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next part. Meanwhile, please subscribe to our channel Yakshas CSC or follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is Yakshas443 for updates on cybersecurity and related news.